a zombie for six months. The only self-aware zombie in Florida. And probably the world. Unlike the rest of the zombies, the hunger that consumed me was not just for brains, but for knowledge about who I was and what had happened to me before I died. I had spent every minute of those six months trying to investigate my own death. Then, finally, a week ago, I had found a podcast with some answers. I tracked down the podcasters with the help of my ragtag mystical crew. Zabel, the town figurehead of the monster town of Wormwood. Hanako, the ghost who lived with us, sometimes reluctantly. And Ash, just a human. Though I had tried to keep my zombiness under wraps, it only took one tiny accidental dismemberment for the serial siblings, Jamie and Elliot, to learn about monsters. Once again, I had brought innocent humans, well, as innocent as true crime podcasters could be, into the dangerous monster world. They had confirmed my suspicions. Georgina Romero, my past self, had met with foul play. They brought me and the crew to where I had died, Sweet Gum Bay. I had hoped it would spark something. But as I stood on the shore, staring out at the water, I remembered nothing. It was like I had never been there before. Are you sure this is where I was found? Unless they lied on the police report. Never trust the cops. Okay, go on. You were a high school graduate with her whole shiny future ahead of you, waiting. You were getting out of Florida. You know, the dream of everyone in Florida. You were going to college out of state. We heard rumors that you were bullied at school. You could have been murdered at the hands of teenage villains. People said you were quiet. Didn't have many friends at school. Quiet? But I have lots of friends now. Well, maybe being dead is your new lease on life? Freed from the burden of your humanity. Or the burden of any memories that shaped your psyche are gone. So it does get better. Hmm... You were shy back then, while you were being bullied. But you lost your memories, so you don't have the same history or trauma as human, Georgie. The night after graduation, you went to the Measure Up Jazz Festival with the rest of class. Jazz festival? That doesn't sound my speed. You were invited by the sweetheart of Sweet Gum High, Vincent Lambert. He wanted to make you feel included. Aw, that's so sweet. (laughs) Vic... If you listened to last season, you would know that Ash is no fan of Vincent and his nice guyness. Anyway, the kids had planned to camp near the festival. Your mom told us that you were supposed to be there for the whole weekend. A festival drawing in eccentrics and strangers. Perhaps a mysterious drifter saw an opportunity and took it. Or more likely, someone you already knew. Vincent had been pretty tight with Claire King and Tony Dante in high school. But ever since that night, people haven't really seen them together. It's interesting, huh? You could be like, I know what you did last summer with Vincent as Jennifer Love Hewitt. Or they just grew apart like normal people do after high school. The last people to see you alive. They said when they woke up in the morning, you were gone. They only saw the morning mist. The police believed Claire, Tony, and Vincent when they said they didn't know where you were. There were no witnesses. No one knows how you left camp that day. Your mom tried to file a missing persons report immediately. It was very out of character for you to just take off. Of course, the police didn't really investigate it first. She's 19. 19 year olds go missing all the time and then turn back up. Most Florida teens would do anything to get out of Florida. They just didn't look for me? Not at first. And so your mother started her own heroic hunt. She searched, posted flyers, and made a Facebook group, but to no avail. Weeks later, she was still begging for the police to do something. Glad to hear human cops are still useless. Once the police finally took it seriously, they dredged the bay and found your body. The reports noted that you had a head injury, but the official cause of death was a drowning. Your death was ruled an accident, and the police went back to writing traffic tickets. What? Why? 
Isn't it their job to protect people? Actually, the Supreme Court ruled in 1981. The police didn't want to investigate a case that might involve Claire King. The Kings have the whole town in their pocket. I've only been dead for six months. It, it takes longer to... There, there, Georgie. Uh, what can you expect from human sentinels? Disappointment? My mom is the only one who tried. Nobody would help her. Georgie. Zabel wrapped her arms around me, hugging me tightly. Then I felt something cold against my skin. I realized it was Hanako. I smiled as I held back tears. Even Hanako felt bad for me. I couldn't keep it together anymore. <laughs> Zabel handed me a handkerchief, and I wiped my face with it. The rumbling sound of an engine made me look up as an old beat-up van approached us. A familiar boot kicked open the van door. It is I, Lucy Van Helsing. Ugh, we can see that. <laughs> who is this? Long story short, a monster hunter who thinks we're evil. Oh. Well, we can just sit down and straighten that one out right now. Oh, we've tried. She's too stupid for it to work. Oh. And I am not alone. Say hello to the Helsing Guard, my awe-inspiring monster hunting army. Oh, wow. More stupid humans. Greta and Johannes Grimm. Johannes was a tall, clean-cut man with tight black curls and dark brown eyes. Greta was a beefy woman with a short pixie cut who looked like she lived at the gym. Let's take these monsters on. Mm, Greta, this doesn't seem quite right. Those are just people. Lucy said it's a glamour to hide their real forms. Thorn LaBelle, my scientist. Ho ho ho, I can't wait to take you scumbags down. Thorn was a heavyset girl with dark purple hair. She had permanent bags under her eyes. And this is Goldie Luck. Hello. <laughs> Aw, she's adorable. Especially with that really, really big knife. It's a Hello Kitty knife. It's so cute. Everyone calm down. Let's just spell them away. Oh yeah, that'll work. She has been practicing, right? Keep us safe from all that is bad. The strangers come and go with only what they had. Wait, wait. That's an anti-theft spell. Give me a second. Attack! Wait, who has who? <laughs> this isn't a wrestling match, Greta. Ah! Ready or not, here we come! <laughs> For the Helsing Guard! We were taken by surprise. Lucy and Goldie focused on me and Zabel. They used their weapons to force us away from the group. Greta went for Hanako, but the blows went right through her. Oh no, please don't hurt me. I'm just a poor, defenseless young girl with a bright future ahead of her. Your fists are just going through her. Because I'm a ghost, stupid. Uh, what? I'll get you, malevolent spirit. Greta, stop. Wow, how will I ever make it out alive? Should we be helping? We're podcasters. This isn't our wheelhouse. Off to the side, Thorn faced off with Ash. I can't stand people who turn on their own kind. I didn't turn on anybody. Humans turn their back on me. I learned that in the sixth grade when my guidance counselor told you me. You and your friends may have your, your foul magic, but I... I have science. Actually, magic and science are two sides of the same coin. There's a really interesting book about it. Dialogues and dialectics between the magics and the sciences by- Don't distract me with your inferior monster knowledge. I'm going to teach you a lesson with my reagent. <laughs> From the bag strapped to her waist, Thorn pulled out a huge syringe filled with a green luminescent liquid. She lunged at Zabel, almost hitting Ash as he tried to defend her. Hey, watch it! Did you even put that through a clinical trial? Oh, this is my trial. 
This is not ethically sound. This is not ethically sound. This is this is not ethically sound. After a moment of hesitation, Ash lunged back at Thorn. I think he felt bad about attacking, being so much bigger than her. Give me that. But Jamie had no such reservations. They managed to seize Thorn's wrist and cautiously removed the reagent from her grasp. That's mine, you monster! I'm not a monster. I'm a human. Uh-huh. How do I know you're not just an undercover monster? Are all of your friends this dramatic? They're not my friends! Thorn tried to regain the upper hand, but failed. Jamie shoved her off. Thorn grabbed the needle and pricked her finger in the scuffle. Uh, ow! That's what you get for trying to grab a needle. Real smart thinking. I'll get... Traitor... Hate... Jamie! Jamie! Are you okay? You were so brave! A true sweet gum warrior. I'm fine, really. Why is everything such a thing? Thanks for your help. Is this group always such a well-oiled machine? Are you being sarcastic? Nothing gets past you. You and Hanako are either really going to get along, or really not going to get along. Ash and the Ripleys were out of harm's way, but Zabel and I were still under attack from Lucy and Goldie. Goldie cackled as she swung her knives at us. She was petite, with curly blonde locks and large doe eyes, but incredibly ferocious. We couldn't catch a break. Hold still. I just want to cut you a little. <laughs> Goldie, please, listen. I don't want to hurt... I don't want to hurt anyone. I'm a good zombie. I don't care. <laughs> But I can prove I'm good! I don't care. <laughs> the cold look in her big blue eyes was chilling. I raised my arm to block a blow, and she sliced my arm off! Tartar sauce! That was my favorite arm! Meanwhile, Lucy was hacking away at Zabel, who had nothing to defend herself with. By the powers of the goddess below and the moon above, I command you to stop. Please? <laughs> Never. Lucy smashed the side of Zabel's head with the hilt of her sword, and Zabel fell to the ground. Ah! Zabel! I ducked a blow from Goldie and ran to Zabel, kneeling next to her. Goldie ran after me, prepared to strike. Lucy watched with a grin. Let's get them together! I can handle this alone. We have you now, monsters! Goldie and Lucy weren't... The best team. Lucy jumped in front of Goldie, nearly tripping her. As I shielded Zabel, Goldie shoved Lucy out of the way and prepared to strike. But Lucy brought down her sword and collided with Goldie's knife. Oof. My head. Get up, Zabel. Uh, get out of my way. Hey, why are you shoving me? We're on the same team. I can't stand you. I know, you're excited about killing the monsters. Believe me, I can't stand them either. But you're getting in the way of my attack. I'm getting in your way. <laughs> Listen here, you self-absorbed little moronic colonial idiot. You think that I am getting in your way. You Isabel, do you know some kind of spell to... Mm, never mind. Never mind w Wait... Are you implying I'm bad at magic? No. You did get hit in the head with a sword. Ow! Watch out! You almost stabbed me in the back! <laughs> Oopsie. At this point, Goldie and Lucy were too intertwined with each other to really take us on. Greta and Johannes had escaped their one-sided fight with Hanako and ran over to their battling teammates. Lucy, uh, we have to go. We're winning! I don't think we share the same definition of winning. Thorn is unconscious. We can't fight with a person down. These are real monsters. I, I, I don't feel like I was actually prepared to fight real monsters. You know what I mean? But we trained. You took us to a haunted house and then got us kicked out for trying to fight the performers. I had realized during the scuffle, I could still control my severed arm. Lucy wouldn't back down easily. I decided to try something.
My arm scurried over to her on nimble fingers. It quickly raced up Lucy's back and grabbed a fistful of hair. I yanked. Hard. Ah! Oh, they have backup! There's more monsters! Johannes, grab Thorn! Team, we are retreating! I could have won this if it wasn't for... We watched them pile into the van and speed away. What had just happened? Huh. Looks like this time someone beside Lucy got knocked out. What was in that vial? It was some sort of sleeping drug. A Mickey Finn? Joy juice? <gasps> Knockout drops. You watch too many movies. How many times have we rendered a monster hunter unconscious? I feel like we should get some sort of punch card. More like a punch out card. Wow. Thanks. Who was that? That was Lucy Van Helsing. She's the last of the Van Helsing clan. They were renowned monster hunters back in the day. Except monsters aren't bad. So they're the bad guys, right? Not at first. Originally, they only killed monsters who harmed humans. The first Van Helsings had the King of Monsters blessing. King of the Monsters? Does that mean there's a whole monster monarchy? So what happened? The Van Helsings became corrupt. They killed monsters indiscriminately and looted what they could. It was one of the reasons for the Great Disappearance, when monsters went into hiding. But then the Van Helsings themselves disappeared. A mysterious disappearance? That sounds like a mystery for the serial siblings. Jamie, what are you doing? Write this down, this could be great for season seven. Lucy was just some crackpot loser who annoyed us. But now? Now she has an army. <laughs> that was definitely not an army. Uh, Alicia? She has enough people for maybe a nice brunch. Whatever it is, it's bad. I stared out at the bay. The same water that I had died in. There was a lot to process. I couldn't waste a lot of time thinking about Lucy or her goons. They were a joke. I had so many other mysteries of my own to figure out. If I had known what would happen, and how unfunny it would be, I would have considered the Van Helsing guard more seriously. This has been Georgie Romero is Done For, written and directed by Cat Walker Shea, with additional writing by Sox Whitmore. Produced by Cat Walker Shea, Sox Whitmore, and Rachel Greenberg. Sound designed by Nathan Coffin. Music composed by Evan Johnson. Featuring the voices of Sox Whitmore as Georgie, Cat Walker Shea as Zabel, Jade Robinson as Hanako, Caleb Feetsum as Ash, Casper Oliver as Jamie, Magneto Morgan as Elliot. Roshni Lueno as Lucy Van Helsing, Alexandria Young Ray as Greta, Gondre Lewis as Johannes, Marnie Warner as Thorne, Mimi Brown as Goldie. Thank you for tuning in to Georgie Romero is Done For. We hope you enjoyed our show and that you share it with your friends and family. Be sure to tune in for our next episode. Remember to take care of yourselves and each other. <laughs>